The sponsor of this episode is BetterHelp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, hey, Lindsay came to the show looking right. Did you finally, you made the move. You made the move. I made the move. I made the move. How was she doing? It was, it was, it was so good. It was, it was so good. It was, um, no, no, it went, it went really, um, it went really, really bad. It went really bad. Oh, it went, I'm sorry, dog. Yeah, she just she says I'm mean and she doesn't like me. Oh. <laughs> I I don't think that I'm the guy to talk to about this, brother. You should go see a therapist. Don't cry on your friend's shoulder. Sometimes it's not right. Cry on your therapist instead. Try better help. Start your therapy journey with better help. It's all online. It's affordable and it's flexible to your schedule. Find your bright spot this season with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash neds today for 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash neds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, love you guys. <laughs> yeah, Hi. Hi. Cheers, cheers. Oh. Hi, we're back Ding. for another uh, mm. rewatch episode. How fun is this? <laughs> hey. Now today, uh, wait, before we actually do the rewatch, uh, mm. how are you guys? Hi. I'm Hi. Well. Hi. Hello. Hey, Hi. you know, how you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Mm. I'm just doing great. Nice. Which is, I know, something you don't hear from me often. Yeah. Mm. Right? But I'm doing great. I love to hear that, Lindsay. Right oh. now. Beautiful. <laughs> it's great right now. <laughs> Daniel? That's what matters. Uh, in the right now, in the present moment, I'm doing very well. Great. Yes. Great. About, and Devon? Yeah, you know, I, I got to poop, but I'm doing great. Oh, no. It's getting, it's getting to that time of the day. Yeah. We'll get there. After this pod. Okay, <laughs> do you guys, I mean, you guys at home, feel free to answer. But um, how comfortable does everybody feel taking a crap uh, in public or at oh, somebody, public, else's, public, public. At somebody else's house. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 gotcha, no. Gotcha. Not, not like I like to pee outside. No, oh. taking a true dump uh, at somebody else's house, at work. So for me, I'm mostly comfortable. It just depends on the setup. And, yeah. and the setup in this studio is just like the bath. There's one bathroom. Yeah. We've got crew, we've got us. And the bathroom is used <laughs> In between pods for mm -hmm. changes, mm -hmm. makeup, mm -hmm. hair. Like it's used for more things. And it's just so right there. Right. That's mm. the same at someone's house is like, if their toilet is like, you know, in that back corner of the house. Then you'll great. go. Okay. Like, great. Yeah. But if it's in the living room, you know, it's right there and oh. we're all right there. And I got to take a huge shit. Oh. Less comfortable. You're considerate. You're considerate. You got Stinky butthole. Right? <laughs> like, I want my stinky butthole to be in private. You know what? If everybody just had matches in the bathroom, mm. it, it, my girl, it, it would help. Or my girl poopery. uses, um, yeah, poopery works. Uh, sage. My girl uses yeah. sage. Oh, That'll work. genius. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So that smart. would work. Because then, then at least you can cleanse the space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah how are you with it? Because you were giving me shit. For not, you shit here. for not pooping and here. Then, and then you're like, yeah, but, I, but I'd never I've poop never, here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'd never do it. <laughs> now there's going to be a stigma attached to you. You're Look, the poop guy. <laughs> I could definitely poop here. I could yeah. do it. Uh, but can I tell you something? When I'm like today, like a day like today, I get so excited. I can almost barely eat. And it's like my bowels shut down. So it's almost oh. like I'm in survival mode. But I don't know how. Everything's tucked up. Yeah, like everything's <laughs> just like, and Dang. we're here for the day. Dang. There's nobody feel like that. All y'all's bowels keep moving. No, that happens. To yeah, me everything too. keeps Get moving. A little, little constipation for me sometimes when I have like a big undertaking in front of me. Yep. Oh no. See, mine's the opposite. If I got a big undertaking, that means there's nerves and adrenaline oh, involved, it opens up. and shit's gotta hits. happen. Right. right. I gotta gotcha. be. I gotta be free. You know. You know, before football practice, yeah, I yeah, I would, I would mm -hmm. have to take that nice poop. Mm -hmm. Now, what before is your auditions. average? What is your average time on the pot? <laughs> mm. I'm pretty quick now. Back in the day, it used to be like therapeutic, and I'd just sit there and like look at things, read a magazine, and I'd be in there like maybe like ten minutes or yeah. something like that. Ten minutes is nothing. Oh no, no, that's some time. That's long. That's to long. To sit on the toilet. Yeah, no. I've been there for <laughs> an episode of a show. Oh wow, I'm a three minute guy. I'm a three minute guy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. Three okay. Minutes. Depends on the day. You know, on a good day, it's just we're in, we're out. Like business right. handled, and I'm out. <laughs> right. But some of the time, it's like I'm gonna be here. Like right. I don't know why, but it's not yeah. all lined up. You yeah. know, the trains aren't all linked Dang. together. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Now yeah. do y'all have something happened on the track, and I gotta sit here for a minute. <laughs> some things in the catch upper up. intestine. Some in the lower intestine. <laughs> um. Now, do you push hard? <laughs> no, you can't push I, hard. No, no, no. But I used to, and that's when I used to take those thirty minute poops. But you're 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 rearranging too no, much stuff. No, you can't be pushing. Only go when it's ready. When go you're when ready it's ready to go. Yeah. Go when it's yeah. there. Don't yeah. be don't be pushing. Do you have squatty mm -hmm. potties? Nope. I don't have a squatty okay. potty. No. I want. I need. I need to upgrade my toilet game. I need a squatty potty and a and bidet. And a bidet. That's mm -hmm. that's what I'm gonna get it's for this time. new one. Yeah. Yeah. It's time. Sometimes I just lean over that squatty potty. I take big deep breaths into my like my core, my lower belly. Mm. And I swear to God, it does something to loosen the hole. So it's like the deeper the breath you take, the more it starts falling out of your butt. Mm. Try it. Like and using, then, using and, your and breath you work to and shit. watch a television oh, show. Oh. <laughs> breath work oh. matters though. Yeah, I use that breath you know? work. Sure. It really does. And the positions you can get. Anyway, let's move anyway, on. Anyway, welcome back. Welcome that, back was, that was, uh, we couldn't let you guys leave Poops Declassified too long. Yes. <laughs> um, we gotta make sure that's peppered into every episode. But episode we recap. need some merch, like something with poop. You know, yeah. it's really a it's really a mainstay of yeah, our podcast. Yeah, it is. Um, but we're rewatching today, um, or we're discussing. This is the episode that when people ask me what is your favorite episode of Ned's Declassified, mm -hmm. there's this one and there's the final episode field trips are the mm. two that are easiest for me to say. And this episode is daydreaming. Oh, iconic. iconic. It episode. is season one, episode 11. 11A. 11 A. Mm. Um, this is one of those that there's some episodes of Ned's I have zero memories from. This one I have memories from. And just this overwhelming feeling of like, this was one of the coolest episodes to shoot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, of of anything I've ever done, to yeah. be really honest with you, this was so cool. The yeah. Fairly Odd Parents were featured on it. Like, it, it really felt like we were in the Nickelodeon family. Yes, yes, yeah. This was our crossover episode with the Fairly Odd Parents. I feel like this episode is probably less of a big deal for you because you were I just in Charlie rich, rich in the. Watch. Yeah, I didn't like that. That yeah, sucks. Yeah, you probably shot your whole episode in two, two I was hours. Like, Why can't I sit in the back of the Mercedes? Dang. <laughs> yeah, so in this episode, like Daniel is like the Charlie's Angels. The Charlie. Charlie's Angel, like the spy support on the screen. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get to have the fun we had yeah, on the Yeah, I shot episode. all that on a green screen. Sorry, brother. We got those like custom jackets. Yeah, oh, you were in a suit. Fly. I was I in a tux. Custom. You were in a custom like leather. I still have it at home. Like this custom leather you with still all the have it? Does it still I fit? Do. Does it still fit? No, no way it oh. still fits. <laughs> no. You still have it? I still have it. You've kept it all these years? Well, why would I? Because I'm gonna give it to my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it up. Wow. Uh, all right. Lit, lit. Um, this episode was written by Scott, directed by Joe Menendez. Oh. Remember Joe? I love Joe. Throwback. Yeah, I, I actually like, I want, when we do the rewatches, I want to like, I the, remember who writes one, and directs these. The one memory I have of Joe is that he wore an unfabulous shirt to, uh, to our set one day. What a bitch. And, <laughs> and, I, and I, I taped something onto him and made him feel shame. <laughs> we actually, but we love you, Menendez. Yeah, we love Menendez, and we love the unfabulous people. There was no shade, but don't bring that shit yeah, don't to our you set. See, I'm bringing dirty <laughs> laundry. It's like coming in with another girl's scent all upon your <laughs> mustache. Oh yeah. my god. Um. All right, you guys ready for a fucking recap? Yeah. Cap it. Because I've also seen we have a lot of fans of our pod now who actually said they're not huge Ned's fans <laughs> who like didn't watch the show a ton, but they love the pod now. I love we that. We love them too. Isn't that, that is so, so cool? cool? So we love you too. So I'm going to give a recap of this episode. So even if you haven't seen it, <laughs> come on a journey with me. Hey. Um, this is the episode to daydreaming. So Ned daydreams at the beginning that he's a hero. Give Susie back her backpack back. back. Yeah. Um, actually that, you have these things it's as an actor, tagline. right? I perform that this way. Give Susie back her backpack. Back. Watching it, I was like, oh, I would have liked to try. Give Susie back her backpack back. Hit it. Yeah. And then clock that I said that stupidly. Whatever. Um, okay. I, I, Thoughts? I like, I like the way you did it. The I, I, I like the beats. I like the beats the way you did them. It, it was probably But it's interesting to try it the other reading, way. But, but yeah, I, now yeah. I want a new way. Yeah. yeah. And then um, Lindsay, she blew the, the guy. The Hold on. She I blew did. The, 
but uh, we're doing a rewatch. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> she blew the. She blew the. I'm sorry, guys. She blew. Um, that was her superpower. I blew blowing the fan people away. <laughs> Still is. I mean, in real Still life, is. too. <laughs> wow. But yes, that was her superpower. Yes. So yes. So um, the was day- this the one where I went? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, all right. What was that? It was super corny, but I was like, hey, you know, I'm here for it, man. <laughs> um, got you. I just <gasps> blew the hell out of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you do that in real life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <music>. <laughs> <laughs> He's just laying there lifeless. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so the daydream Ned's having uh, is the bullies are picking on Susie, and Ned comes in with Cookie and Moe's to save the day, mm-hmm. and we each have superpowers. I'm uh, Cyclops. Cookie has laser Pew. eyes from uh-huh. his glasses, blows one of the... Bu- you blow one of the bullies I mean, away. Hey, you know, hey, <laughs> you adult laser, survival guy. <laughs> you laser a bully, uh, Moe's... There's no other way to say There's it. There's no other way to say it. She's got super wind powers. She's like Storm. Blows Crony away. There's no other way to say it. In Theo's dreams. <laughs> Hey-o. And uh, Ned uh, uses telekinesis to uh, grab Susie's backpack from Bully Loomer, and Bully Loomer screams like a little girl. Yeah. And Ned saves the day, and Susie says, my hero. Um, oh, and then I'm like, Hey, w- w- me too, or something, something like that. He yeah, wants to be yeah. Susie says, "My hero," and Cookie's like, "Heroes, we helped too, bitch." Uh-huh. <laughs> and she's like, "Go away!" And Moses is like, "Come on, man. Cookie, go on." Yeah. Um, yeah. So Sweeney gets pissed. Ned wakes up to the real world, and Sweeney tells him, "Mr. Bigby, you got to stop daydreaming, or you can kiss your grade goodbye." Ned gives some tips on daydreaming. Um, He says, stare at an educational item in the front of the class if you're daydreaming so you can cover for yourself. And he helps Coconut Head in that moment. Um, And then the class goes to leave for lunch, which they are very excited about. It's pizza day. Pizza day. Very excited about. Now, now, did you guys have a day in school that you were excited about for for food? We would get promised pizza. That was like a thing. Hold it's kind of like how the wait, wait, wait. No, no, yeah, it happens. Like He's... teachers would dangle that like a carrot. Like if you don't be good, we're gonna remove pizza day. Yeah, oh, pizza they would day was use it as a negotiating chip. Yeah, for but... a little bit. Some schools just had it. Once you were in middle school, that was, pizza was always an option. Right. But we would have these like pizza days where we could sit and watch a movie. Yeah. <gasps> And there would be pizza there, and we were wow. excited. And was it good pizza? Because my never el- cardboard, dude. My elementary school pizza, <laughs> I can like still see it. It was awful. Why Horrible. were they? The, it was like those. It was squares? yes. It was a square. Oh, with those nasty sausage esque things. Yeah. They were yes. square. Sometimes yeah. these weird cubes. chunk yeah. cubes of what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what were those cubes? Magic meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no man. No bueno. Yeah, I remembered. Uh, those I'm gonna. Weird pizza I'm gonna days. say no because I, I wasn't usually a fan of school lunch. My mom would pack me my lunch a lot yeah. of the time, so yeah. no, there wasn't really. A, I did love French toast sticks, and why they were those serving were that for lunch, I don't know. I like those. <laughs> the sponsor of this episode is BetterHelp. Man, can't believe it. I'm so glad we're together again. Ooh, what? Huh? Huh? Are we? No. No. I, what What gave you that impression? I thought I thought we were doing this thing. I mean, look, I love hanging out with you. I love the time I get to spend with you. You are like a soul connection like no other. But you are also impatient, self-righteous, and narcissistic. Aww. All things that I don't want to deal with again in my relationships. So, it's a no for me. Now, normally, I would isolate from my loved ones, start drinking alone, and call that girl who set my couch on fire one time. But these days, I call my therapist. There is a better way. Consider starting therapy with BetterHelp. It's all online, it's affordable, and it's flexible to your schedule. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash neds today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, Dot com slash nets. Pizza parties, they would call it. That's what I remember. Oh, it was like, oh, we're going to have a using, pizza party yeah. if you guys like made a certain grade. Like, if, yeah, yada, yada. Yeah, they'd use it as a little carrot on a stick. And did everybody get mad at the kid who brought the average down? Oh, yeah, yeah, always, yeah. I And me, yeah. Fucking, Fucking Billy. William. <laughs> Will, Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> you know, I reached out to Brian because I found him on Brian IG Shaw. after that. I did. He hasn't responded. Oh. He never will, you fucking 
fart framer. No, he's he's plotting on Look, you. He's dude. living a good life now. I just want you to reach out to me, Brian. No Brian. hard feelings. Fucking Damn. Brian farts. You fucking, you fucking <laughs> stank him for the rest of his school we, career. We, uh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Brian farts and he does it now. That ah. is farts all stinking of this whole room. Hey. Wow. Hey. Wow. Yeah. So fucking pizza days were not a thing in my school. Oh. I guess in middle school I loved um, I, I just loved the ch chicken tenders and fries. Like that was the lunch that was like enticing for me so how did your teachers bribe you got a oh, recess taking recess away was that it? i guess in elementary school yeah I no forget. pizza days really you never had a pizza day well you were at uh, catholic school catholics eat pizza no they don't <laughs> <laughs> um no we, fun. we definitely fun. we we had our pizza parties for sure and mm. th those were sacred days yeah they like, were. that felt yeah. so good and here's the thing you also like if you got a certain thing on a test you got to go and get a piece of candy at the back of the room which mm. i also don't think is the greatest yeah, yeah. thing for school but i was just like <gasps> or you know what they did to punish us so on the board was drawn this big gumball machine out of chalk, and all of our little names were written on these things with magnets as gumballs, right? Yeah. Mm. And if you were bad, your gumball got moved out of the machine. And then what would happen? You'd just be known as somebody who lived outside of the machine. <laughs> it's like, where's Lucy? That's a fucking name. metaphor, God dude. <laughs> God did a lot to God did a lot to sort of punish us and discipline us too. You know what I mean? God, God Damn. was the unseen hand. It's Damn. true. Yeah. Uh, my my cousin just sent me a meme. It was like someone's quote, which was like, "We should all start canceled and then have to work our way back." <laughs> and then uh, and then the quote under it was, "That's Catholicism." <laughs> Damn. <laughs> wow. Nice. Nice. Thanks for that, Liz. That was funny as hell. Damn. <laughs> um, okay, back to the rewatch. Hey. Class is excited about Pizza Day. They're going to rush out the door, and Sweeney stops them, and he says, because you've been wasting my class daydreaming, I'm going to waste some of your lunch. Um, with a riddle. With a science word puzzler. Oh. And... Don Don Creech, he had just no. an amazing episode. Puzzler. Uh, the way I he can, said that. Yes, I can waste some of your lunch with a science word puzzler. And then he goes, woo! <laughs> they just unhinged him. They yep, let the leash yep, off, yep. man. Loomer cries, but it's pizza day. Oh, that was um, a great one. Great line. And Sweeney's puzzle is why are these words together? Water, wolf, and trap door. Mm -hmm. And he says the one clue is the answer is in this room. Spiders. Don't give Way it away. Spiders. Spoiler alert! <laughs> oh, I actually forgot that was it. Like, honestly. Well, yeah, because you didn't rewatch the episode. Yeah. But then I was just like, oh, I know what those sense. are. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. But yeah, so the class starts trying to solve this puzzle, and Ned goes back into his daydream, uh, which is him dropping into a Mercedes in the middle of the school in a tuxedo like James Bond with Moe's next to him in like a Uma Thurman Kill Bill <laughs> outfit um yeah. and cookie is on the monitor like telling yeah. them what their mission is i'm the is. gps i'm the siri it, for the episode <laughs> yeah you're charlie <laughs> and like you're giving us the mission you're like sweeney's you know locked everyone you got to solve the puzzle do it ned um mose asked ned can i drive and ned says no um i was so jealous like I was, was I like I was like I'm a part of this, but not really the star. And now, granted, <laughs> it, <laughs> that's great. That's great. And it's the first time I saw you do this that I was like, oh, could he get any more dreamy? So you did this. <laughs> oh, you saw uh, me do that. Okay, for those of you like just listening time. and not watching, there's that fun thing you can do where you lick your two fingers. Wait, uh, your, your, the, the you the lick pinky your pinky and, the thumb. and your thumb at the same time, and then at the same time you place them on your. Uh, Eyebrows and smooth them both out. Ba bam. I Damn. literally was just like, <gasps> <laughs> so Lindsay, creamy. I got to tell you, it will never get old to me hearing how attracted you were to me. I know. Early on, right? Before I even it came knew, into anything, before I even knew what attraction was. I loved was. you before you became hot. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, Damn. you were always such a cutie, but I, I think of it now and I'm like, you were right. Here I was a me. little boy. And I was like, God, I love him. But it goes to show you have good taste. Right? Or she likes looking down at men. <laughs> oh! She likes, she likes to be <laughs> outranking them. I like to think you have good taste. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and the room went silent. <laughs> we'll get you back there. Oh, we'll, get, we'll get you back there. 
Uh, taste comes back around. Um, okay, so Sweeney taunts the class with pizza on a string. He's now full-on villain in this day. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. He's got pizza on a string, and he sees Agent Bigby coming to defeat him on his monitor, and he sends the deadly evil ninjas of death to stop <laughs> Ned and Moe's. Um, Moe's and the super spy car spray the ninjas with our first clue word, uh -huh. water, defeat the ninjas, um, and because you were so successful at being a spy, Ned has to relent and let uh, Moe's drive the Mercedes. Let me drive the boat. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're like, can I drive now? And I'm like, damn it. Dude, and can I just say the, the hallways that we were in, it, it, they were so small, guys. I mean, it was like just really a square, yep, right? Yep. I mean, it couldn't have been more than maybe like 40 feet or something like that. They really made it look like you guys were whipping through all these different parts of a school, but we're just, it's just one square. Mm -hmm. yeah. They would change the lockers yep. sometimes. Yep. To, mm -hmm. you know, they did such a good job. And they got like the smallest Mercedes you could because it needed to fit yeah. in these hallways. And guys, we were not driving. First of all, we're inside. So we're not turning on carbon monoxide like inside yeah. the. Uh, so it was like crew members pushing us and like film techniques to like, mm -hmm. you know, show us wiggling around these hallways. It's so funny. Yeah, I think dude. they just shot green screen. That yeah, was part of it. It was green screen. It was it in the hallway and, and crew pushing it. Yeah. You know, did I neutral. have fingerless gloves? You did. <laughs> you did have fingerless <laughs> gloves. Um, in the real, so now Moses driving, and then in the real world, Ned wakes up. Uh, Sweeney gives another clue that it's in this room and it spins. Loomer tells Ned to solve it, or they're gonna eat him for lunch. <laughs> Crony asks, "Really? Because I was kind of looking forward to the pizza." <laughs> and then Loomer gets to be really funny and say this like over the top, like. No, not really. <laughs> like, it was so funny. He like, right. gave this like, great kind of performance. No, not really. It spins, people. Come on. Uh, Susie, <laughs> Susie says, it. oh, well, then it's the world. We can all leave. Yay. Yes. Yeah. It's everyone not. throws out their guesses, and they're all fucking wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and now Ned goes back into his daydream. Um, Moses shredding around the hallways in the Mercedes. Now you're just having fun. Uh, they pull up to evil science class. They can't get in. And that's when the fairly odd parents show up. Girl. That was so cool. That was Scott lit. was a writer on Scott fellows who created Ned's was a writer on the fairly odd parents. Darren Norris, who played janitor Gordy voiced Cosmo, uh, yeah. Jorgen von Strangle, Timmy's dad. Was Gordy in that episode? No. No, he was just doing the voice. Cosmo. Yeah. 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 Mm. Which was yeah. so great. So perfect. Um, Butch Hartman, who created Fairly Odd Parents, is a great dude. I actually went on his podcast once. Um, nice. Yeah. And that was just, like you said, like that really felt like, oh my God, like we're on Nickelodeon. Like yeah. doing a crossover episode with the Fairly Odd Parents, like I really grew up on uh, Nickelodeon animation. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. Rocket Power, yeah. Fairly Odd Parents. The Bob. That was a little bit later, but the was Bob. It? What did you The say? Bob? Oh, Spongebob. Yeah. The Bob. I, sorry. The Bob. Sorry. <laughs> hey. What? Hey, <laughs> what you, you put mean that about together it? real fast. Yeah, the Bob. You two are smart boys. <laughs> smart try. boys. We try. We think. Emotionally a little stunted. Hold on. Smart oh, yeah. boys. No, I'm just kidding. Not a little, a whole lot. A lot. <laughs> Bruh. No. Um, but Ned was definitely on shrooms this episode. because it was Yeah, just, Ned, was, yeah. Ned was tripping balls. <laughs> yeah. um, what other Nick animation shows did you guys love? What, Red cat, dog. Rats? Oh, cat, cat dog. dog? Cat dog. Alone in a world with a little cat dog. Angry Beavers. Angry Beavers. I loved it. I can't I even remember the thing. Did you know for the longest time, I yeah. literally used that line like, you're going to be, you're going to have to sit on top of a mountain in a nature beaver sweater for seven years if you tell a lie or whatever. There was like that one episode where they would have to like stand on the mountain yeah. with the itchy beaver sweater. I didn't know why they would itch them because they were already beavers. But, um, hey. it was a great show. Dude, Angry I Beavers. Angry I forgot beavers. about that. What was Ren and Stimpy on? Nick, that was I actually have that what? shirt here today. So. Stop. Oh, no, I actually, Renan's, no yeah. I actually have that shirt here today. I forgot. They are on the cover really? of that shirt. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was Nickelodeon. Renan's, I don't know how. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it was, it, they it were was. dark. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, like, yeah, it was that gave me nightmares. I loved it, though. Like, yeah, when those creators. they had something about, like, an egg or something that they had to keep whatever, and, oh, man. It was so many weird, gross things going on in yeah. that show. Yeah. But, yeah. like, like so extreme, like, his eyes would put, like, I don't know. It's very uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. Dang, yeah, they would do some, like, Sick stuff. Doug was Doug on Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug. Yeah. I remember that. That was more calm, you know. But I loved it. Yeah. Rocco's but, Modern Life. Rocco's yep. Modern Life. Yeah. That oh, the, yeah. is a masterpiece. The Wild Thornberries were Nickelodeon. Oh, Thornberries yeah. was one. Yeah. Of them. Yeah. Nigel Thornberry. Nigel Thornberry. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. I love those shows. So many things. Wow. Yeah. Great, great job, Nickelodeon. Except yeah. for not paying us. 
Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Just that. Yeah, part. that was a cool part of Nickelodeon too. Was like we've talked about it before. I think we auditioned for Ned's at the Nick Animation Studios, and like that was, that was just so cool fly. shit. That building mm-hmm. is like so fun and creative and colorful, and there's like life size cutouts of all the Nick characters. It's legendary. Bruh. Yeah, and of course, I gotta emphasize Nickelodeon to this day made one of the greatest shows, two of the greatest shows ever to exist, which is Avatar The Last Airbender and oh, The Legend yeah. of Korra. And that was out while we were doing the thing. I used same to love time, coming and chatting Same time about as Ned's was, yeah. the last, uh, was Avatar The Last Airbender. I still to this day watch both of those series back and I'm just blown away at the storytelling. Bruh. Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni, who is like the head of the fucking Star Wars universe now. Mm. Storytellers, man. Yeah. yeah, Dave Filoni did a bunch. I, I remember watching it as an adult and going like, who is creating this? Because these these stories, he wasn't the creator of Avatar, but he directed a lot mm, of them. Mm-hmm. I'm like, who is doing this? Because this guy? is masterful storytelling. Yeah. And then Dave Filoni went on to like work with Marvel and Star Wars and all this shit and makes sense. We forgot Rugrats. Rugrats was huge. Classic. Yeah. Classic. Um, then- all right. So, Fairly Odd Parents pop in. They give Ned wishes. He wishes to poof into the science class that they can't get into. <laughs> That's our moment. Um, Sweeney, unhinged Sweeney. Well, Agent Bigby, you've come very far, but you'll set the you won't set the class free unless you can answer the science puzzler puzzly word game. <laughs> Ned wakes up in the real world. Sweeney gives another clue. You can find it easily on the web. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sweeney's unhinged. Oh, Crony's like, wait, well then can we use the your yeah, computer? Can we use the internet? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he goes back to evil laughing. Um Ned try so they go back to the daydream. Ned tries to defeat Evil Sweeney with Moe's power. That was a funny yeah. moment. He's like, "Let them go, Sweeney. They're hungry. They smell melted cheese, and uh, I've got Moe's power. Go get him. You're a mm-hmm. big girl." <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, "But he's evil." <sighs> um, and then he sh- he's like Evil Spider Man, and he webs us to a cabinet, and that's how this all comes together. In the daydream, Ned's webbed to a cabinet. Um, in the real world, uh, everyone's just freaking out to figure it out. And then he, he realizes what the answer is, which is that wolf, water, and trapdoor are all kinds of spiders. Yeah. This whole episode lands on the tip at the end, which is, um, like the whole thing was about how daydreaming, um, sometimes helps you come up with solutions to things. It's how inventors invent. It's how scientists do science and it's how new ideas are born. Yep. And I, this, I know was an episode near and dear to Scott's heart. Uh, yeah. Like really this whole fun, beautiful episode with actually only a few tips peppered in in the beginning. And then that big one at the end, like was really, I, I know Scott was trying to just like really land that message. Like of, he like, needed to get this to yeah, the Yeah, kind of like, it's okay. Not in these words, but like, it's okay to be ADD. It's okay to be ADHD. Like mm-hmm. Our brains do not work in a linear right, fashion. Right. Like, it's okay to, to it's a, yeah. It's okay to and daydream. And break the status quo. And, yes. I, and I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Have a different capability and ability than, you know, yeah. than just this like mold that they sort of try to yeah, put out. And in a million, a million ways to skin a cat. You don't have hold to on. do it the same way it's been. He's like, hold on now. But what's your favorite? It's a million ways what's to skin a What's your favorite way to skin a cat? <laughs> That's such a weird phrase, but yes. I mean, you know. Is there a million ways to skin a cat? I feel like oh, there's yeah. probably you just a couple. You can start from the, the snout. You can start from the... You never skinned a cat? No. Yeah, no? Dev. I have a cat. I'll never skin a cat. What about when he passes and you, yeah, you want to use his pelt? Yeah, you have to use the pelt. Or else you're being wasteful. Oh. Well, what are you going to have to remember the cat by? My memories. Taxidermy. Make a oh. hat out of that, baby. Hey. <laughs> just make like a kangle like you know like a like a like yeah. a paper boy out, out of my cat's belly. Yes. yes oh no this this is my cat <laughs> my, my cat skin boots <laughs> done that's so sick wow so oh, sick my but yeah God. great message such a, such a great beautiful message. message yeah who the fuck taxidermies their dead pet that's a real weird thing to do well you don't no, do it you not. hire someone <laughs> I'm talking about, but people do it. No, people do it. It's, it's very not, weird. It's I not mean, weird. To it's have, not weird to have a stuffed, the stuffed corpse of your friend, <laughs> of your little buddy. Like he doesn't love his cat enough. He don't. I love my cat uh-uh. m- more than anything. I would snort no. my pet's ashes if I could. Ashes. <laughs> I thought he was gonna See? say ass. Ashes. I would snort my pet's ass. You oh, would burn wait. them. Wait. Instead what of, I meant was instead of stuffing 
and preserving their weird body. Just like. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just always like, looking at you. You did this to me, by the way. <laughs> really? <laughs> You're cuddling with it. And like, Damn. <laughs> Cryogenically freeze that bad boy. Right? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That, that is funny. Yeah, taxidermy. No, I really think it's weird, guys. I don't want you to think of that. I would taxidermy a pet. I wouldn't. Or skin a cat. Or skin a cat. But I've skinned deer before. And, and I'm from Mississippi. My, my uncles and dad, really. But um, yeah. more my uncles, because yada, yada. But, um, you know, they wouldn't, like, mount the, the, the deer mm-hmm. up there or whatever. So you have mm-hmm. to taxidermy it to mm-hmm. keep its antlers and it if it's intact. Yeah. Sometimes you hit the head so, you, you know, the head won't be intact. But. Oh. Yeah, either they mount the antlers or the... Wait, have you shot you know, a deer? I've never... No, I was not good enough. I wasn't a good enough shot. No. Uh, would you guys ever go hunting? Birds only. Oh, I go hunting all the time. I just miss. <laughs> <laughs> I go all the time. Never hit anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I probably couldn't. Uh, like, I, I, I couldn't see myself doing it unless there was, like, a survival situation. Right. No, we, I, eat, we eat the deer. I, no, that's... I, no, that's, I, that's, I, that's I know. That's, I, I don't... I actually don't judge it. I used I to judge it. I, I judge. Know. I judge some I judge versions those of fucking it. safari things where oh, they're like, "I'm gonna get the big all game." What? The, what I is know. that? But then I have to be honest. I did hear a podcast talking about some of now. Some of those are fucked up. Some of that's poaching. Joe Rogan and some loves of it, that. Though. Yeah, and some of that like killing like a fucking elephant. Like fuck you. Yeah. But I did hear a podcast where a guy was saying there's a lot of misinformation about that. A lot of the hunting like that, like big game hunting in Africa. Now, look, some of those people are just fucking assholes, like hanging out with a fucking dead jaguar and like posting it on Facebook. I'm like, dude, this is so awful. However, for some of them, it's a it. There's only a few licenses to kill these creatures. They have to pay tens of thousands of dollars to do it. And that money goes into the conservation of the land and the other animals. And for some in some cases, the license is their targeting. Like they know which animal they're going to hit. It's an older animal that's like oh. already breeded and, and stuff. So in those instances, like I heard this podcast with this guy who got a ton of hate online. Uh, he, I think he shot a rhino and he got so much hate from people who didn't know. And I probably would have been one of those people like, fuck you, dude. Why are you doing this? And he said, like, you guys don't understand. Like, I waited years. I paid a ton of money that actually goes to conserve this land. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue. Uh, it's, uh, it, for me, it's not helping his case, but go ahead. Really? Go ahead. Yeah, no, I still think the guy sounds like a jackass. But go ahead. I mean, if it's going to the, like, no, no, the I anti-poaching, see. like, yeah. if it's going to the conservation. Oh, you guys don't understand. <laughs> No, he's yeah, but no, I get it. That that softens the blow for sure. It does, you know. <laughs> and if and if it's an animal on its way out, like now that the rhino's like, fuck, my knees are bad. Do you know what I mean? Somebody put me out of my misery. Do you know what I mean? So I think there's sides of it I don't know. I personally don't think that's, I could look at an animal and fucking yeah. shoot it. That makes it better. That does. That, make that it does. Better. That yeah. explanation is is interesting. And I guess like <laughs> I was all looking at it as like these like billionaires who like don't really care i, th- I think some of it is that yeah yeah, yeah. and but fuck it, you people. It, it makes me like i can't even watch documentaries and i'm like watch it because it's happening but i can't dude i, know. I can't it hurts me and I, yeah and you're right because not all of them are just those billionaires some poachers are actual illegal poachers yes. too and some of them are probably letting people with money come in and do it yeah with their illegal operations exactly. so i think it, right yeah, it's just a large issue, and it is very complex. It's better to hear that some people are paying money, and it's benefiting that yeah, ecosystem. Exactly. Right. And I mean, is it like it does go back there for sure? Yeah, 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 that's what he was saying. Like this license to kill this creature that you wait for is funding the wow. conservation of like the as ecosystem long as he's not course. an outlier because the- he was making it sound like th- it's pretty common for this big game stuff. Like they're not letting people just go do this. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And I, I do think. Plenty of hunters, like you said, like you guys eat the deer. Like I think plenty of hunters actually, as I've gotten older, something I judged, like maybe I was ignorant to, plenty of hunters have actually a really close relationship to nature yeah. and to the importance of using all of the animal mm-hmm. and like the kind of tragicness of shooting them, but then the respect and the gratitude of, of using, you know. But then I do think there's plenty of hunters and plenty of people who just don't understand that like animals are fully sentient, sentient beings. beautiful yeah. species 
They're not lesser than us. They are with us on this fucking planet, man. And like, sure, to hunt and eat, that is part of nature, yes. But like, I do think some people are way too disconnected Mm -hmm. to what animals actually fucking are, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I remember I had a conversation like with my dad one time about like it was when I was not eating meat and he was like, you know, but like it's a cow, like it's a pig. It's not like our dog. And I'm like, what's the difference? And he like couldn't come up with an answer, but I really saw like in his head, he actually thinks like there's a huge difference between dog and cow and pig. And I'm just like, no, dude, like what's the difference? We've been enculturated to feel that way. Yeah, sure. to feel like that's primarily a source of food. Yeah, right. Well, and for well, no, and for else. him, it was like, like no, but like our dog, we love and have a relationship with, and like he knows us and he's sentient. They're not. That's cow and pig, and it's wow. like, like there was literally a separation of seeing them as like, no, these are fully sentient creatures who also, even if we're going to raise them to eat them, deserve some present good health life love like whatever man grass Mm -hmm. you know like we raise our cows to eat fucking corn corn in dirt patches when they were made to eat grass their four stomachs were made to process grass and like fuck man it's brutal Hmm. Uh, going back to your point about all hunters sort of have this closer so i have this acting student and she's like maybe 12 or 13 and she's an avid hunter with her dad. They live in like North Carolina or something. Yeah. And this girl is brought to tears just joyously over everything. She's the most sensitive little thing. And yet she goes and births goats. And like she had to give a goat mouth to mouth because like he came out and she still ended up losing him. But like she what? cares. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it still died. Ugh. But she, she yeah, suffocated that him. deep. She's like, Get the fuck out of my face! <laughs> <laughs> that deep care, you know, that it, it really is something to have a respect for the animal. That y'all are both um, fulfilling something for each other, as opposed to, mm. you know, it's an interaction. But you got a good jog, and I get to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, Fair you, guys deal. you guys know I love this survivalist show. Alone, you watch that. Like these people literally don't have food unless they hunt it. And you see all of them, a lot of them, especially because in a normal hunting situation, like you still have your refrigerator back at home. So maybe you go on this hunt and you collect the animal and then you go back home and you kind of do it once and, you know, you Mm. process the animal on a loan. Like they're literally trying to survive. And there's these people who have incredible hunting skills and are living a primal life on this show and for this competition. But being out there for months, needing to kill again and again and again, even for these people who hunt regularly, for some of them, you see it. You see the toll it takes. Like, they're like, I don't know if I can kill another thing, like, even though I need it to eat. And some people are like, just like, I need it to eat, so I'm doing it. But Mm -hmm. you see the toll it takes. Like, they are close to the nature with it. And it's really beautiful to see, you know. Also, Mm. the gratitude. Like, because they're so hungry. This dude got a deer, like, this guy who I'm sure does not express his uh, emotions like free flowingly. And he starts crying like be- when he kills this deer, not because he killed it, but because he's so fucking grateful. Like I've been starving. Thank you to this life. Like, thank you to life. Like I get to eat. And you know, we're all definitely disconnected from that aspect of our life. Cause we just can go pick up. Food. Yeah. Wow. This is wild. This is so funny that you've hunted your whole life, but you said you've never shot a deer. Never, never hit one, no. <laughs> How Damn, bad a Daniel. fucking shot are you, bro? Gee. Pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm solid. Like, t- target practice, I'm good. You know, maybe I feel for those animals a little more than I know. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, pointing it away, pointing my aim. Oh, missed him, dad. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't life. think I could, I don't think I could do it. Yeah. Like, I think I would be that way. Like, oh, I hit <laughs> I the remember, dirt. Like, like, I've hit birds before. And I, I remember uh, I always gave my brother crap for it. Because he's, he's, you know, he's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. But um, <laughs> but we went out shooting. And <laughs> this was before I had hit a bird. But we went out shooting. And, uh, and you know, he had been doing it for a while. But he, he hits a bird one time. And it falls out from the sky. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. But 
but he was just, <laughs> you know, he was just flying. And then we walk him, you know, because we have to go and extract it. So we we go, my dad picks him up, and my brother's just bawling no. because he realizes he that this is life. the true consequence. Yeah, you you killed something. And he cried like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Nate. <laughs> I'll never let you live it down. Yes. Oh my. Yeah. Yep. Oh. I, I love that though. Like that's I beautiful. That. It should yeah. feel that way. Even if you're doing it, yeah. you are taking a life. Because you think and it's a game a, as a kid. Yeah, there's a but, there yeah. should be a just a a weight to that or a yeah. sensation from that. It shouldn't feel fucking good. Right. Unless you're hungry. Yeah. Even then, it should feel good, and also oh, like yeah. I took, you know, yeah, thank it's not, you. It shouldn't I feel took... like, oh, victory! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a big bad man because exactly. I killed this un, you know, like yeah. I hate those hunters who will just get up in their little, their little, uh, whatever you call it, outpost, or whatever. Um, and it's like this wide open, like grazing field, and they already have the animals like fenced in, like they're fenced in within like acres and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, but they'll just be all these deer, and they just go up and take their pick. I yeah. feel like that's a little weak. Yeah. I prefer to like go out if a deer stumbles upon us, take the right. shot. Yeah, don't wait at their watering hole. Right. What is, like how much more advantage do you need? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. yeah. I don't know if I could do it. No. Although when I was vegetarian for 10 years, mm -hmm. one of the few times in those 10 years, there were literally like I like three times I think where I had meat in in those 10 years and one of the times I was at a bachelor party uh for a buddy and one of his friends who was there um was like, "Hey, I brought sausages and burgers made from a deer that I shot with my bow and arrow mm -hmm. and took to like my 70-year-old Italian butcher and like that's what I brought and I was like I could have that meat like <laughs> like yeah. that's you you did the whole thing and processed like yeah. yeah and it was fucking delicious and I've been a Yum. meat eater ever since no 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 I, oh. and I didn't go back to meat after for years still oh don't. no now I now I eat all the bullshit nice Got all getting all them GMOs. I love it. Hey. I just needed sustenance. I needed to drop something. I needed to balance my life out. No, you don't I have to like explain it. It's we've okay. spent this whole episode talking about like food and big game poaching. Oh, but we no, we had a solid uh, Where we start twenty five from? minutes Did about have daydreams. Any daydreaming, daydreams right? in your oh, life? Dang! Oh, we blew the episode. This oh, we should have talked about daydreams. Those are good. Do Wet dreams. Wet dreams? I I mean, wet dreams are class. not daydreams. Day wet dreams are for night time. Oh, you're right. That's not a daydream at all. Nope. Yeah. If you're coming in your pants during the day... Uh, <laughs> That's a larger issue. That it's a, a bigger problem. Day. A great Also, day. potentially a sex crime. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Pee Wee Herman. I, I don't think like, that I ever daydreamed. <laughs> Hold on. Ever? I mean, when I was going to sleep at night, I would make up scenarios where I was the victim and everybody had to like come to my aid and feel bad for me. That sounds right. At night, though? At night. That's not to a daydream. To put myself to sleep. To put myself to sleep. Otherwise, I was so laser focused on what was ever oh, in front mean, of like me. Oh, you mean like in class and mm -hmm. stuff like that? I've, I've drifted. Like, dude, dude, I don't have to be asleep to have a daydream, no, right? No, that's just the point. A daydream off. isn't sleep. A daydream I, is just drifting off. Yeah, I've, I've drifted off in like, in like a history class, you know? Like certain things. Like if it's like math, I'm not going to daydream. But like history classes, I would just kind of oh, they're talking about these people in the 1470s, and then I'll go to that time and mm -hmm. kind of wow. have my own experience. Like, I'm on the battlefield with these guys <laughs> and the Roman Legion and the crap. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, daydreaming is like an active part of life. My life, I don't know. Yeah. Wait, lastly, and then we got to go. But yeah. do you guys have an internal dialogue? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. I'm not sure I do. There's not words in your head? Not in the way that, like... It's directed at, like, I, I, I think I've heard people ask this before, and I just don't think I have as active a one as people might think. I think you do, though, because, like, you've said you've had conversations with, with us. us. With the crowd. That's thing. what it means. It's like you've had conversations with us that we didn't have. Like, you were yeah. running words in your head. Like, and you were your questions are too good it, for it, you not to have it. Exactly. Uh, but I did hear that, that like, some that just came out on TikTok yeah. that some people don't hear words in like their thoughts aren't in words Which i don't understand i think they just want attention 
<laughs> hey, I hate to you know be that guy, but yeah. I don't think I have an internal I agree. dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Let Give me, me tell you about attention. what this has done for my life. Oh. Dude, I, I agree because it doesn't, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. How do you process the fucking yeah. world? Dude. But you don't. That's what? the thing. You, you don't think process they're just it. reacting to stimuli immediately? I, like you wouldn't make it through the world. I think they're acting on a lot of in intuition. Yeah, like, but that's so what I am I, but... But it doesn't go through my head what I'm going to ask you before I ask you. I know, but you have words in your head. <sighs> it's, it, it's I know you have words in your you butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, all up in that butt. Can I speak into your butt? <laughs> Turn up, um, Daniel. Yeah, you you've got internal no dialogue. Yeah, sometimes it, sometimes like it's hard to shut it off. <laughs> well, damn. just because it's just because it's big. There's a wow, big. Oh, oh. There's a big old got a caboose, booty. guys. I got a caboose. Yeah, yeah Devin has zero backside. I don't even know how you pooped. Dude, dude. lower back. No, no, no. Nice. Part of part of <laughs> my fucking right <laughs> part of my family's genetics is just no ass. Oh my god. Like no there's nothing there pants don't fit right cuz there's it's nothing there's hold. nothing there. Mm -mm. No dumpy. No. Inverted dumpy. Yep. Do you know they have pills that can like actually make people in just in that region lose the Hey, BBL. It's like the opposite of a BB BBL. Oh, to lose it? To lose Don't it. Don't lose it. So Have flat thick ass. asses, if they call babies. It, what are they? Not par par paracetamol? Dude. No, no, no. They're no acetal pills. <laughs> 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 I didn't mean, I had to. Ah, uh, yes. But, um, Nobody wants the fucking <laughs> flat no ass that my family has. No one wants this. Ass. On both sides of my family, that's two family trees with wow. no ass. Wow. <laughs> it's almost like they sought each other out. They, yeah, these two pancake ass families were like, oh, you have no ass. You have no ass. <laughs> I mean? I feel like there's a lot of resentment and frustration that gets projected for no reason bodily. For sure. Even, even uh, it's probably tied into some currently with, um, you know, plenty of people in our country and I guess around the world, like their reaction to like gay pride parades and stuff mm -hmm. and homosexuality, like kind of the freedom of mm -hmm. that sexuality mm -hmm. and then being like, no one should be able to be that free. Right. No. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It, no. I, I, I really think a lot of things are sexual hangups, man. I really, I, I really I do. I could agree with that. Sexual hangups do drive people. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and government. Holy well, yeah. hell. Yeah. Repressing. They want to control. If you're repressing something natural, if it's natural, it's going to come out then in weird ways because mm -hmm. it must be expressed. So if you're putting right. an unnatural fucking repression on it, like, it, yeah, it's going to distort you because it needs to just be free flowing, you know? Yeah. Damn. Speaking of that. Hey. Love it. Tips. Tips for the daydream. Mm. Hey. Don't just let it rest in a daydream. Make it a reality. Hey. Right? Your daydreams are stepping stones towards your manifest reality. So don't let them just sit up here. Bring form to them. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll just add to that. Like, I saw that amazing um, video. Like, this was, a, it's from years ago, an interview with Jim Carrey. And he said, like, it was after he blew up. But he said, like, I used to drive to the top of Mulholland Drive. Mm -hmm. And I would just imagine myself booking the biggest roles and being called mm. by the biggest people and he wrote himself a check for a million dollars and put it in his his oh, wallet and mm -hmm. like he literally was dreaming his life into reality and that's like a real part of daydreaming it's definitely something i do is like dreaming into what do i want my life to be to feel like like what is it? What does it look like? And that's like a beautiful part of daydreaming is actually like getting that reality in my body, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, do that. Ma yeah. Manifest your life this way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then take action aligned to that vision. Yeah, man. No, that, that's so real. Uh, yeah, guys, creativity is an amazing thing. Friendship is not a thing. thing. <laughs> that exists. <laughs> But no, creativity, guys, <laughs> it will help you triumph over these obstacles um, that are presented to you. And sometimes everyone around you will feel like that is a concrete obstacle, but it'll take that little bit of creativity to um, lead your people to the promised land.
and get on out of that obstacle. Go on, Moses. Hey. Go on. Be your own Moses. Pull that yourself part. from the desert. That part. It, it, Wait, it, didn't he lead him into the desert? Never mind. Yeah, don't yeah. be like Moses. Moses actually didn't make it. I think Aaron made it to yeah. the oh, promised land. Yeah. Uh, dang. Don't, don't be Moses. Moses. Moses was the last one through the Red Sea. Oh. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I've swallowed up. No, he was in the desert and he I died closed it too there. early. <laughs> Damn it. I closed it too early. He's running. To <laughs> <no>. <laughs> anyway. Oh, anyway. Have a great That was one. a little daydream that we just had. But I'm that was so weird and awesome. I love um, you guys. Love you all guys. Right. Love you guys. See, See you next, next week. week. See you next week. Thanks for watching this week's episode. <laughs> Big shout out to our Woo! patrons. Patrons. We love you. Thank you for supporting us. Thank yes. you for making this show possible. Patreon.com slash Ned's Pod. Mm -hmm. We got bonus content. Oh, yeah. We got patron only live streams. All that. We take your questions and answer them on the pod. That part. It's ah. a good time. Wow. Do it. And a major shout out. Um, Either over my face or your face. Uh, to, our to our super, super friends. Super friends. Hey, sir, yeah. super time friend. for the super friend dance yeah, now. Super friends. Time for the super friend dance, dance now. Super friends get super duper dance. Super super dance. dance. Uh, big shout out to our super duper friends. Super duper friends. Legendary. X Ack, X A K. X A K. And yeah. then who else we got? We also got Eve. Rebecca. Rebecca. Yeah, let's go. And Eve. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, thank you guys for real. Super we love you. Dance. Super we'll see you on the live Super stream. We love you guys. Peace. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode of Ned's Declassified Podcast Survival Guide. If you can't get enough of us in your life, go over to the Ned's Pod Clips YouTube for shorter content. And if you really can't get enough of us, go join our Patreon now for exclusive bonus weekly content, live streams, all that. We'll put the link in the description. See you next week.